This Wow Air A321 was just starting its journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Unbeknown to the passengers and crew, this aircraft had two issues that had remained dormant for the previous four days. But today was the day that the crew, passengers and airline became aware that these issues existed. To see what happens next and why, stay tuned. On the 1st of November 2018, WOW Air Flight 117 was scheduled for a transatlantic flight from Keflavik Airport in Iceland to Baltimore in the United States. It was due to depart at 1530. 186 passengers and 7 crew were preparing for this journey across the ocean. The aircraft was an Airbus A321, which was manufactured in the year previous in 2017. It had a valid certificate of airworthiness, and more importantly for this incident, it had recently been under maintenance for its sea check inspection. Just for reference, a sea check is an in-depth maintenance that aircraft have to go through every 18 months to two years, and it roughly takes three weeks to complete, or 6,000 maintenance hours. During the sea check, examination of structures and in-depth lubrication of fittings and cables are carried out. The other checks the aircraft will go through are A checks, which occur every 8 to 10 weeks, usually taking between 6 and 24 hours. And in this check, all emergency equipment is checked, filters are changed, and critical systems are lubricated. And the largest of the maintenance checks is the D check. This usually occurs every 6 to 10 years, with the aircraft basically being dismantled, inspected, and put back together. This process takes between 3 to 6 weeks and costs several million dollars. After two or three D checks, the process becomes more costly than the aircraft's actual value, so it is then retired or sold on. Four days prior to this date, the aircraft had been released out of the sea check in this airport, which I will no doubt pronounce wrong, but it is in Slovenia. And this is where the sea check was carried out. From the point of release to the incident date, the aircraft had flown 13 legs which amounted to a total of 56 hours and 25 minutes. All of these trips were completed without any issues. This brings us back to the 1st of November. The crew arrived at the aircraft whilst the passengers were preparing for the flight in the terminal. The co-pilot entered the cockpit to start the pre-flight checks whilst the commander carried out a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft. The commander took his time to ensure everything was secure and as expected and once he was happy, he joined the co-pilot in the cockpit. The crew then gathered the latest weather information and signalled for the passengers to start boarding. The weather was fairly standard for this time of year. The wind was from 230 degrees at 6 knots. The cloud was overcast at 4,200 feet with light rain and sleet in the area. The temperature was 2 degrees Celsius. Visibility was more than 10 kilometres and the pressure setting was 1003 hectopascals. The crew had planned with this weather in mind, and nothing out of the ordinary was there to prevent their departure. Once the passengers had all been boarded, the crew requested engine start, and soon after they were cleared to taxi to the holding point at runway 28. If you enjoy the videos on this channel and want to help me on this quest to inform and entertain more people, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. YouTube sometimes isn't too kind in promoting some of my videos. And this should help me out a lot. The co-pilot was the pilot flying for this flight, with the commander being the pilot monitoring. As flight 117 reached the taxi holding point, the crew completed their remaining checks and informed air traffic control that they were ready for departure. At 15.47, WOW Air Flight 117 was cleared for takeoff from runway 28. They lined the aircraft up on the center line and then the co-pilot moved the thrust levers forward. The engines roared and vibrated the aircraft as the thrust increased and the aircraft moved down the runway. At 15.48, flight 117 took off and started its journey to Baltimore. With the aircraft steady and the climb at a normal rate, the flight crew carried out their after takeoff and climb checks. Everything appeared normal with the crew and passengers settling into their flight. Just a few minutes later, as the aircraft was passing through 7,040 feet, the flight crew received an advisory message on their Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor, or ECAM. 
the advisory message was for oil quantity. The crew immediately checked the oil page on the ECAM, which showed them that the oil quantity for engine number two had dropped to three quarts. A quart in this case is a quarter of a gallon or just under one liter. To understand the loss, both engines had 18.5 quarts of oil in them before departing Kevlovic. And for those that don't know, engine number two was the right engine as you are looking at the nose of the aircraft from the pilot's point of view. The crew remained calm with the co-pilot continuing to fly the aircraft and the commander double checking the quick reference handbook for any further actions the crew needed to carry out. According to the handbook, the oil pressure and temperature needed to be monitored if the oil quantity advisory message was shown. The crew noted that the oil pressure for engine number two was 46 psi and the oil temperature was 63.5 degrees celsius. At this point, the crew were unsure whether the problem was an issue with the oil sensor or an oil leak. The oil pressure was currently holding, which would suggest the sensor may have a malfunction. They wouldn't want to continue over the Atlantic Ocean and then experience an emergency without a nearby airport to divert to. The aircraft continued to climb and as it passed through 11,000 feet, the oil quantity for engine number two dropped to zero. Simultaneously on the ECAM, the oil quantity for engine number two was replaced by XX. The oil pressure and temperature were unchanged. So the crew started to discuss that it would appear that the sensor has a malfunction. 30 seconds after the oil quantity dropped to zero, the oil pressure started dropping. The crew now concluded that they did in fact have an oil leak, not a faulty sensor. They soon received an ECAM low pressure warning due to the drop in oil pressure on engine number two. The crew understood that this would require an engine shutdown. The commander contacted air traffic control and informed them that they were experiencing technical problems and that they will be leveling and looking to recover to Kevlovic. Air traffic control confirmed this and provided clearance to return, noting that the runway had changed from runway 28 to runway 19. The flight crew analyzed the fault and confirmed with the quick reference handbook that the engine needed to be shut down. During the monitor of the engine screen on the ECAM, it showed that engine number one, the left engine, was showing a slight loss of oil quantity as well more than what was expected at this point in the flight. The co-pilots leveled the aircraft and the crew carried out an engine shutdown of engine number two. They checked their actions against the quick reference handbook and confirmed the correct actions had been carried out. The co-pilots made sure that the aircraft was trimmed correctly due to the asymmetric forces now on the aircraft. And once the crew were happy, they turned the aircraft back towards the airfield and started to discuss their best options for the approach and landing. As they had recently taken off, landing now would mean that they would be overweight, which could damage the landing gear if the landing wasn't carried out with an appropriate rate of descent. This would be more difficult with only one engine operational. Analyzing the options, they could burn off fuel and lower the weight of the aircraft, but this would increase their time in the air. Or they could continue and land overweight, which would minimize their time in the air. Due to the nature of the shutdown and the lower than normal oil quantity on the left engine, they opted to land as soon as possible. At 16.05, the commander took over as pilots flying and declared a pan. Informing air traffic control that they had to shut down engine number two, meanwhile the co-pilot briefed the senior cabin attendant of the situation and informed the passengers that they were returning to Kevlovic airport due to technical reasons. The flight crew now set up for their overweight asymmetric approach to runway 19. They performed their approach checklist and the overweight landed checklist. The crew amended and checked their landing performance for runway 19 and confirmed everything was within their performance data. The commander called for the gear down and began their descent on the glide slope towards the airport. The light wind and runway change assisted the crew with their approach and at 16.23, just 35 minutes after takeoff, flight 117 landed safely at Keflavik Airport. The crew were cleared to taxi back to the terminal, where they shut down the remaining engine and the passengers departed the aircraft. In the initial inspection of the aircraft, 
it was found that the inside of engine number 2 cowling was wet with oil. The drain plug on the main oil supply filter was loose along with the safety wire. A further inspection of the whole aircraft was carried out later that day. During this inspection, it was discovered that an oil leak had also occurred on the left engine, engine number one. The engine cowling was wet with oil and the same oil drain plug on the main oil supply filter was found loose along with the safety wire. When they investigated the loss of oil, it was discovered that both engines started the day with 18.5 quarts of oil. After the aircraft had taxied back and shut down, engine number two had 0.75 quarts of oil remaining, meaning it lost a little less than 18 quarts of oil, and engine number one had 16.75 quarts of oil, meaning that it had lost a little less than two quarts of oil. The normal rate of consumption for oil should not exceed 0.60 quarts of oil per hour. Both engines exceeded this, but luckily for everyone on board, engine number one's oil leak was not as substantial. So how did this happen? We are aware that the aircraft was recently in for maintenance, and during this check, the main oil supply filters for both engine number one and number two were replaced. When the Icelandic Transportation Safety Board investigated the processes during the sea check, it was discovered that the Airbus substack was not carried out correctly. The expected method of installing the main oil supply filter was that once it was installed, it would be inspected by a different technician. However, when the process of installation was checked, it was discovered that the filter was unable to be inspected as it was installed earlier in the process. This occurred due to misleading subject titles, where the technicians are told at part four to install the new oil supply filter element in the lube filter housing. It then breaks down that task into smaller parts below. It then goes on to instruct their technicians to install the filter cover at part seven. The work was being carried out based on the header of the task instead of following the work instructions in detail below. Because it was installed in this way, it meant that parts four to seven were accomplished with the filter already installed into the engine. This prevented the possibility to inspect the correct installation. This also prevented the possibility of a detailed check of the correct alignment of the locator pin after installation and prevented the possibility of ensuring the filter element pin touched the sides of the ribs of the filter cover instead of being on top of them. It was further discovered that the O-ring was installed on the drain plug instead of installing it onto the filter cover as per the AMM. The technicians described it as a more desirable way of installing. There was a specific subpart of part four stating, caution, do not install the black packing on the drain plug. This was because the O-ring could push back against the backup seal, creating a gap. And that is what happened in this instance. Following this incident, WOW Airlines inspected the drain plugs on all engines in its Airbus fleet and discovered three other aircraft with the same or similar issues. One had a damaged O-ring in its number two engine and the other two had incorrectly installed drain plugs on both engines. The interesting part here is that the maintenance for the last two aircraft had been carried out by a different company and therefore not isolated to one place. It highlighted the need to clarify the instructions to ensure the work was carried out correctly. The safety actions carried out as a result of this incident were that the headings of part four and part seven in the AMM substack were changed to prevent the possible misunderstanding that the oil supply filter element is to be installed in the lube filter housing in the wrong step. There was also a service bulletin released which would reduce the risk of the incorrect assembly due to alignment of the filter element pin. And that's it for this video. The interesting part of this one is that both engines were in the same position, meaning that both could have had catastrophic oil leaks leading to a dual engine failure. Lucky for everyone on board, engine number one held out and everyone was able to learn from this incident without anything going too badly. If you want to see a video on how a crocodile led to a plane crash, click on the video on the screen now, or check out my playlist for many more air crash investigations. I hope you're having a great day, and as always, 
I'll see you in the next one.